such a movement we'd ever need. And we will thank you for it. We'll praise you, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Just magnify you and worship you tonight. And we thank you for it all in the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus. We do thank you, Lord. Bless the service. Welcome those joining us by live streaming. And let's just have a good time in the Lord. Brother Tom comes with a song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you come to page 184?
just takes my burdens away All the troubles of every day Every night when I pray Jesus takes my burdens away In my life I've had many cares Seems like troubles are always there But about the dearest friend He'll be with me till the end Jesus takes my burdens away All the troubles of every day Every night when I pray Jesus takes my burdens away I've learned a lesson well Greater than any tongue can tell I don't have to carry burdens around I go to Jesus and I lay them down Jesus takes my burdens away All the troubles of every day Every night when I pray Jesus takes my burdens away We're only here just a little while glad Jesus takes your burdens away. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all pray for me. Bye. 
while. It's just going to be all over the place. Oh, you will okay. be there. And Grandma will be there. And your mama and yeah. your mama. And, you know, it's just going to go on and on everywhere. It's millions right. everywhere. And I just can't wait to go. Amen. 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 Kind of go along with what everybody else is saying, but it's a little different.
with those that are here tonight and you that are watching on uh, Facebook uh, live stream and we're so glad you're with us tonight and that is doing so good for us I'm telling you it's just helping people and people are getting healed getting to pray for people in England we're just touching people I saw people who used to go to church here listen to us Sunday night Teresa Ryan and Peggy Malinado and just a lot of different ones listen to us and uh, you know God has a way of getting the church to you you know and uh, you know I believe he'll do that amen he knows how to do that tonight and uh, I'm thankful to all my families listening I hope your family is listening got preacher friends listening we dedicate the singing to all of you tonight and hope it's a blessing but we're doing here for the Lord amen we're not no superheroes and we're washing this place down uh, as we do the TV or they do the TV and we're taking all the precautions necessary we're keeping distance from each other we're not shaking hands or hugging necks a lot we love each other but we're just respecting each other and the people they got at home and so we're just trying to be wise and serpents and harmless and dove look with us if you will we read all uh, those verses about 10 or 11 verses from verse 4 down to verse 14 and I think that will give us a text that we want for this service tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Praise the Lord. Uh, for many shall in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Amen. If you notice the title, not yet tonight. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in divers places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And be a whole cause of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Let us pray. Father, I love you tonight. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of prayer. I just pray that you help us tonight in a mighty way, Lord, that we'll so be careful to give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord, for everything that's done tonight. We worship you tonight, Lord, and we really do worship you. We thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. We give you all the praise, Lord. Bless you, people, tonight. Let us get acquainted with the signs of the time, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Not going not gonna to be long tonight. Uh, I just don't think I am. I, I'm not going to hurry. I'm going to obey the Lord. I thank you for those that are here tonight. And I usually tell the people when they're seated to turn around and shake somebody's hand, but I've been telling them just waving at each other. Tell them they're glad we're here tonight and we're glad you're here tonight. And we appreciate that with all our hearts, even being in the house of God tonight. Praise the Lord. If you would leave your Bibles open as we study uh, and you follow along with us tonight, we've got the scriptures that I'm going to read are on the board. Uh, all of a sudden, didn't have time to do stuff like this, and now we've got a lot of time. So we're trying to make it uh, uh, more interesting and you read your Bibles, but I think that, uh, that maybe you can see this on uh, Facebook, but the people here can see it, and uh, sometimes the print up there is easier to see than it is to see the fine print of your Bible, so uh, just keep your Bibles open if you would. The words of Jesus is about all I'm going to read tonight. Uh, everything that you see is in red letters. Jesus himself said it. A lot of it's supporting Bible prophecy of Daniel's 70th week and different things, but it's, uh, it's all Jesus and of course he knew what had been prophesied back in Daniel's day and Ezekiel and, and uh, Jeremiah and the other prophets and Daniel that foretold the end how things would wind up. Only one, only verse 1 and verse 3 
are descriptive words by the writer Matthew to tell how things are and where we are and what's going on. These detailed words set the stage for what is found in our text. I believe that uh, you need to take this. We're not taking anything out of context, and I would not dare get into all the different beliefs tonight of no tribulation and great tribulation, and, uh, you know, I just believe what the Word says, and, uh, and, and whether it's a, a pre or mid or post, a rapture, I do believe in the rapture, amen. amen. I'm not going to argue about it when it's going to come, but I'll tell you what I do believe. I believe before it gets too hard that the saints of God can't make it, the rapture will take place. And I believe that's pretty clear in these scriptures that I read tonight. And I just believe that. And, and I'll say that boldly to you tonight. As you look at these scriptures there, uh, you find that uh, those first three verses there, that you see them and, and uh, you know, believe that what it says. And read it with me there. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See that ye see ye not all these things. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, and that shall not be thrown down. And as he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming. Amen. So we find Jesus leaving what he abandoned for judgment. He'd walked out of the temple, you know. We'll go back and read the last few verses of chapter 23, so just keep your Bible open in a moment, but not now. But I want to tell you that he says, says that they ask questions. Whenever we see the world start to crumble, we'd better have or uh, get our eyes on the things eternal. Somebody say amen. Amen. When we say things begin to come to pass, the Bible said it's at that moment that we should say uh, and lift up our head our redemption draw nigh. So I believe we're there today, and I believe this scripture is so on target to where we're at tonight. I'm not trying to take anything out of context, but the Bible said, prophets have said it, uh, Paul said it, uh, James talked about that there'd come a time when the rich man would wonder what he's going to do with his riches, you know, weep and howl, you rich men, because you can't spend your money. And I, I don't know that, you know, I know that I think this is a real deal. I think that uh, there are people sick and hurting and, and uh, you know, even preachers that I know uh, have, have contacted this, that I know of anyway. And I think it's a real deal. But I think, as I say so often, that the devil wants to strike fear in your heart. The songs tonight, I talk to Tim talking about God taking care of us, you know, that we're thinking about home and Jesus is going to fix our problems. Marsha song, they all went together to get where we are tonight, to let you know and hear that we don't have anything to be down, doom and gloom about tonight, you know. I remember one time that uh, Sister Malden, just several years ago, found out she had breast cancer. And so they did the test, and they called us back over to the office, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure how we looked when we went in there, you know, but we didn't know what they was going to say. But as we went in there, uh, the doctor told us, and, uh, you know, she was telling us real slow that she removed a lump, and, and uh, she thought it was going to be all right. And Mama was 80 years old or close to it at the time. And, and, uh, but before she tells us much, she said, I want them doom and gloom faces off of y'all. Amen. And I didn't realize I had one, but sometimes we just wear them and don't realize we got them. Amen. Amen. And I think if we're not careful, the devil will put doom and gloom on every one of us. I'm telling you. If you're right with God, uh, you ought to praise Him and say, God, I know you're going to make a way. Yes. Whether there seems to be no way, you're going to take care of us. But this didn't catch God by surprise. But Marcia made reference to that as we started tonight. But it, it, it shouldn't catch us by surprise. This know also that in the last day, perilous time shall come. I think the first portion of, of the scripture that I read in the text, uh, you know, all these are the beginning of sorrows, wars, and earthquakes, rumors of war, pestilence in the land. I mean, if anybody don't see that happening today, you're blind, you know? And so I think these days, even though Bible prophets got it all broke down and tell you this is the middle of Daniel's 
seven a week. And I'm not getting into all that. I'm just telling you that Jesus told these people here that that they went and asked him how would the end be and when would it come to pass? What would happen when it started, when it come to pass? He began to tell them, amen. Whenever we see the world start to crumble, we'd better get our eyes, as I said earlier, on the prize. Uh, the two questions they asked, uh, he had already started to answer in those verses there. If you look at that, when they, but they asked two questions that he'd already started to answer. Number one, when shall these things be? In the destruction of the temple that he was telling them about. When shall these things be? And so then they had another question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? I don't think that it was just happen chance or I don't think it was just stumbling around words. Jesus was on target when he said there will be some things that will start to happen, but the end is not yet. And that's what I'm preaching tonight. And I believe this section of time that we're living in started when Jesus said this. Amen. I believe it started then. I believe Bible scholars say, and I think it's right, that's what I think, that, that those people that were living thought they would see the rapture. You know, Paul and them, Peter, they spoke so plain of it that I believe they thought they'd see uh, the rapture and, and great preachers, uh, Wigglesworth and, and Moody and different ones, you know, I'm sure in the eight, late 1800s and early 1900s, they thought they would see the rapture. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, he thought like he was going to see it when you read some of the stuff that he wrote, but they didn't. Amen. Does that mean that God's not coming? No, it just means we're somewhere in that space of not yet. Amen. We're, we're just not there yet. Amen. But I'm telling you, it will come. And I think I can make that a little clearer if I just stay with my note and get through this as God gave it to me. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? To, to see where he told them in those three verses, you'd have to look back at Matthew 23, uh, 33, uh, 39, and you'll see how this stage got set to start with. Amen. Let's read it together. He was telling them that they what they really were to him. I mean, we, we don't we don't like for Jesus or our family or nobody else to burst our bubble. But I'll tell you, church, it's plain that we ain't where we ought to be with God. And we need to get closer to God. Every one of us need to get closer. And uh, Jesus was disappointed with them when he walked out of the uh, temple. And, and, and here's what he said. Read it with me. Uh, verse 33 down through verse 39. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? So I believe that he's still talking to that group. There's some of them around today. Wherefore, behold, I send you the prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall scourge you scourge in your synagogue and persecute them from city to city, uh, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel, the blood of Zacharias, the son of Archias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Amen. Uh, and then he goes out, and we know the story. As he looks out there over Jerusalem, verse 37, 38, 9, said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered my children together, even as a hen gathered her chicken under her wing, and ye would not. Amen. I believe we're at that place today. I believe we're, we're somewhere in these verses that Jesus is talking to his disciples when he starts and says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. And then he gets down there to the point and he makes it plain. I'm sure they think that's it. We're leaving. He said, but the end is not yet. Amen. Just a few more days of labor, then we're going to sit down beside King Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, amen. Don't doom and gloom when you're going home. Amen. You can't tell me I'm dying. Amen. Oh, when I'm about to go to heaven. Amen. I'm about to start a living. Amen. amen. If that would happen to me or you before this thing's over. I'm telling you, put your trust in God and believe God. Amen. Oh, Jerusalem, the kills the prophet. Behold, your house is left desolate. 
That's what he said. He had pronounced judgment on the temple for the way they were doing. And most people think that that's prophecy uh, that will come when, when God brings uh, uh, Israel back to its rightful place. And I, I don't argue with that, but I'm telling you, it fits us today. It fits us today that are living. I know that I'm living in this last days. I believe we're there. I believe we're living in the end time ministry. I believe we need an end time, I end time preaching of the word because we're living in the end time of, of this age. Amen. Amen. We need somebody to tell us like it is. Donnie sings the songs I'm done. Preacher, tell me like it is. That's what we need tonight for somebody to tell us like it is. But he said, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, You shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. For 2,000 uh, years, the world has been left to do their own thing. Amen. And they pretty much have. Somebody say amen. amen. What they want, kind of like Solomon. What they saw, they went after it. And if they ain't admitted it yet, I can tell you that like Sodom, Solomon, we found out it's all vanity. Amen. I went at her all that stuff, and it didn't do nothing for me. Amen. And I'm amazed at how, you know, that God gives us opportunity. And when he says here, I would have, but you would not. Amen. Well, I'm telling you, there's more people. Uh, the, the TV station that we own said the viewers, was, the number of viewers was up. Amen. Well, I, I, I'm not surprised because now we're kind of forced to. If we can't go no more, can't go out to eat, can't go to movies on Saturday night, can't go to the uh, March Madness, can't go to the ball games and things around. I mean, you know, uh, if you don't have a whole lot to do, you get bored real quick. And so you start looking back to God. If we hadn't done it on our own, God's given us an opportunity that we can't say we don't have time. Right. I work right. every right. Sunday. I work every Wednesday night. I can't come to prayer meeting. I can't come to revivals because I'm working. Well, I ain't heard nobody make that statement here lately. Somebody say amen. Right. amen. Uh, they, they just it's cleared up. Amen. And so God said here in the scripture, amen, that, 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 that for 2,000 years when Jesus was here, uh, 2,000 years ago, he told how it would be in this day. And like I said, I believe the end time, the last day, started right then. I believe right then it started for us. I believe that it was there. And, and that dispensation of grace, when when the, the, the prophet said we got a little window of grace, we got a nail in the kingdom of God, we got an opportunity, God started on that day. Amen. Amen. When the church began in the day of Pentecost was started, amen, the birth of the early church, amen. But I can tell you tonight as we go back in a moment to our text, we see the start of the last days that when Jesus spoke about it, that has continued on to this present time. I, I read a lot, and I don't have all the figures, but I've read a lot about every year since Jesus left as far back as they could find records for, for thousands of years, 2,000 years, hundreds of years. Uh, you know, in the last uh, uh, five, 600 years, they had accurate, well, well, uh, accurate reports, and, and they had these reports of how many earthquakes, and every year it got bigger, 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 and they're having in places they never had them before. When everybody's falling on their face and don't know what to do, and presidents and governors are saying, we're not going to let this happen. I respect that. I'm glad they're not going to uh, let things happen to us and take care of the people just like the pastors are trying to take care of the congregation. Right. That's why you're getting a lot of this on streaming live because we don't want to put anybody at risk and yeah. we're keeping our distance. I went to the doctor yesterday and they wouldn't let me in and they took my temperature. I just had a little checkup for some, for some moles and things on my face and head. But, uh, you know, they wouldn't let me in until my temperature was 98.1. They said, you can go on in. And they let me in, and, and that went on, and then they made a standing distance. And I looked at the nurse. She stood over here, and, and the doctor stood as far away from me as I am in that pulpit. And she, she'd tell me, she said, you take your glasses off, you know. Uh, let me look around your eyes. And, and I had my shirt on with my T-shirt on, and she said, you take your T-shirt down and let me look at your shoulders. And she looked at it in my neck and stuff, but she wouldn't get too close. And then she'd back up to tell me what her diagnosis was and what she thought. And I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You're just trying to look after those people that you're running in contact with. we got people here 
uh, that, that work in the medical facilities and they're having to be around that. They're depending on God to take care of them. And I am too. Got family members that work in the school system and they can't help it. And they have to, you know, people that work at public jobs, you know, and you got to you gotta do it. You got to do everything you can. But at some point, we're going to have to say, God, you got our attention. Amen. God, you have our attention. If you didn't do this and it was the poor government or if it was China's fault or all the reports out there, I don't have any idea. But what I do know is the Bible said that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And I refuse to go crazy with this. Do I worry about it? Does it make my chest tight? Sure does. When I think about things, and I prayed this morning and last night too, when I was the only one up at my house, God, you know I got a, a, a son-in-law, and you know I got a son that don't go to church, and I, I'm not judging them, Lord. But I can't wait to get to God's house. I can't wait to hear the word. And I wouldn't want any of them. I got grandkids, and I think they're all right with God, but God knows that, and I don't want any of them. And I, I ask God today, nephews and nieces and cousins all around, and that by their own admission are not right with God. And it made me almost want to sing that song, wait a little longer, please, Jesus, just a few more days to get my loved ones in. I, I don't think you will, because the Bible said when the time comes, uh, he will come and will not tarry. Right. And the Bible says, and I know that some of that they say is in the in, in the tribulation at different times, but he said those days wasn't short and there'd be no elect saved. And the devil would go out to get the very elect. And I know what he's working on. But I'm telling you, if it don't do nothing but bring me down. I, I meant to bring me back, not down. Don't leave me there. I'm not down. But if it don't bring me down to the fact that I realize that there's love on some mine that's going to die and go to hell. Some of my family and friends got daddies lost and, and husbands lost and wives lost and not go to church with me. But I'm here to tell you tonight that we better wake up and hear what God is saying in these scriptures that I'm reading to you tonight. Amen. Amen. For 2,000 years, as I said, this world has been left to do their own thing. As we go back to our text, and she'll pull it back up, and I'll step to the side and, and maybe just hit on a couple verses here, and we'll go down through it one more time. We'll be through. But I'm here to tell you tonight, uh, as we go back to the text, as we start, we see the start, the text, we see the start of the last day that continues to this present time. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man can deceive you. I talk to preachers and I'm telling you I've never seen so many opinions in all my life, many different views of, of the scriptures and, and you know you don't even have to get into the I'm talking about in the Protestant churches that believe in the shed blood of Jesus. Some of them still believe you can do anything you want to and go to heaven. Some people people believe that 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 you know you you can't do nothing and go to hell. But the Bible said he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. The Bible said he that puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. There's too many things. It said if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of Christ, there remain no more sacrifice for sin. Right. Hebrews 10, 26. And I can tell you tonight that we just better be careful. And, and false prophets will tell you that you're all right. You drink a little bit, that's all right. You ain't nobody going to go to hell because it's not a word so it's in the mission to both. It's a gift of God. But James said, you show me uh, your faith with, without words and I'll show you my faith with words. Amen. Or words with faith, what, whichever it is. But but I'm telling you, tonight you got to have it together. But it's by faith that just shall live by faith. Without faith it's impossible to please God. That's what the Word of God tells us. Amen. And we need to hear that tonight. Amen. And, and listen as we read this. Jesus said unto them, uh, Take heed that no man shall deceive you. If you think we're not living in the deceptive times, you never look, better look again. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But back to my text one more time on this line. But the end is not yet. This is where we are right now. I don't know how long we got. It's went on since Jesus said it 2,000 years. 
But whether it's going to go on another week, another month, or another year. But I can tell you, we're one day near home. We're getting closer every day. And we're closer to the trumpet of God. I looked up yesterday and I thought, Lord, I'd love to see you coming in the sky. But then I began to think about my loved ones. And the Bible says in that day you can't look back. You just got to go home with him. We've all been warned. We've all had a chance. If you listen to me tonight and you don't know the Lord, you ought to call him. You don't have to agree with my theology. You just got to believe the word of God. You just got to believe what God said. Amen. Maybe I got it a little different from you. Maybe you got it a little different from me. And I believe the Bible said to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But don't get where you haven't got no trembling. And I got saved 40 years ago and I'm still saved tonight. And, and that's the way you feel. And you can be. I believe in eternal security. I do. I just don't believe in unconditional eternal security. I believe if, if ever how the tree falls, that's the way it's going to lay. I believe if you die right with God, you can let the other face and come in and pray you out of hell if you want to, but I wouldn't count on that working. Amen. I'm just telling you tonight, the Bible said, because you wouldn't listen, because you I did and you wouldn't. Uh, Proverbs said, because you said not all of my instruction and my correction. He said, I've sent wise men. I've sent men that knew what they're talking about. And some of you killed. Some of you put down. Some of you got rid of. And, and, and Jesus just pronounced judgment on them and walked out. In verse 5, the Bible said uh, that uh, uh, for many shall come my name and I'm Christ. I mean, we've had that going on for years. You know, the Jim Jones thing and different ones and, and uh, the thing that happened in Texas. I forget the name. But you know, that they actually believed they were God. And they, they was over that little flock. And he, some of them even called their name Jesus. I didn't believe it then. I ain't going to believe it now if I hear some of them. Because I believe nobody will have to say, that's him, amen. John pointed him out a long time ago, and he's not changed. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's what he is tonight. That's what he will do for us. Amen. And he goes on to say that nations will be against nations. Amen. In verse 6 and 7, wars and rumors of war ends not yet. Verse 7, nation arise against nation. All these, verse 8, are the beginning of sorrow. Verse 9, then she shall deliver thee to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. If you think the church is loved, it ought to be. Amen. Somebody ought to be thanking God that there's still some people praying and crying out to God. People that's lost and undone and on their way to hell ought to be thanking God that somebody's still standing in the gap making up the hedge. Hey, they're, they're few and far apart, but there are some out there. Amen. Amen. There's some that's still holding on to the tongues of the order. I had a man tell me the other day on the phone. He said, why won't people just leave me alone let me be a sinner? I said, because they love you. Because they love you. They don't want you to die and go to hell. Amen. Right. And, and, and you know, whether you think it's too late or not, I believe like David did for his child, pray until the breath's gone. Pray that God sometime you'll be merciful to them and give them an opportunity to make things right. Because no man can come to, to the Father except by Jesus the door. And you can only come when you feel that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the third person in the Godhead talking to you and convicting you. Godly sorrow works for penance. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then many shall be offended. I'm telling you, I ain't never lived in a day when you make somebody mad about everything you say. Amen. Uh, somebody get upset with you. And it ain't just the nations. They're out there, out there too. It ain't just the country and people that you meet in, in the mall and stuff. I'm telling you, sometimes it's that way with family. Amen. They're easily offended. And the Bible said that the Spirit of God is not easily offended. It is not puffed up. Amen. And we see a lot of people that has that spirit. And, and you know, it's pretty easy to see we got the wrong spirit. Amen. Amen. Somebody hear me. Amen. Shall not be, shall be offended. Betray one another. Many false prophets shall rise. Verse 7. And deceive many. And because iniquity shall bound, the love of many shall waste gold. Amen. Caught up in the sins of this world. Amen. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of this kingdom this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Somebody say amen. 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 I just want to tell you, if you've lived your life and you've failed in every attempt somebody made to tell you about the rapture, 
And uh, you just ain't believed in the rapture. I've had preachers to tell me that God called them to preach against the rapture. Well, I would be afraid to say that because it's so evident in the Word of God that it's there. But I got a word for you. This is my closing word. They can come back. I'll just recap a little bit here. But the last word in my notes was if you fail to believe in the rapture, here at verse 14, when he says that then shall the end come, you'll find out. You'll find out that there's a rapture. The church will be taken away. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. 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 Not yet. I don't know how much time we got in the not yet phase. But there was only three or four verses there. But the end is not yet. Amen. And it began to get worse and worse and worse. And then they say, and the gospel's going to be preached. You know, I'm telling you, and I say this respectively, I got preaching friends that don't think you ought to stream live. And I can tell you that for years, I've been here 40 years, and it didn't cost so much money that we could have done it a few years ago because I got friends that was doing it. But it was so strange in November, God impressed me through a strange event, you know. One of our, we lost three dear men of our church last year, Brother Jack, Brother Ken, Brother Jimmy, and others lost loved ones, Tommy's mom, different ones. But I, I just thought about Jimmy and then. I said, the Lord knew what he was doing to get him out of this thing. Amen. 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 But he told us, he preached to us for almost a year in Sunday school about Revelation and how it was going to be. And, uh, you know, he just said what I said. I don't think I'm going to be here. You read on down just a couple more verses. I don't have it on the screen. But he said, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet that Jesus was referring to here, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Let him wish, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take one anything out of his house. Neither let him uh, which is uh, in the field return to uh, back to take his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that are get, that, that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your life, that your flight be not in the winter, neither in the Sabbath day. And then the next thing he says, for then shall be the great tribulation. Somewhere between verse 14 and there, I'm leaving here. Amen. Amen. I'm not staying in the great tribulation. Hallelujah. And if you don't believe in the rapture, I sure wish you would because it's our ticket out of here. Amen. That's right. It's our way to escape. The Bible said, how, can, how shall we say escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Amen. It's full and free. It's a, it's a simple plan of salvation. Amen. And I believe God's just bringing us back. My daughter, Charlie, used to sing a song years ago. We're going back to where the church stands strong. We're going back to prayer. We're going back to this. And I'm telling you, I, I think sometimes to go forward, we've got to go back. I've been preaching that before this ever hit. I preached it about two months ago here in this church before the average person knew anything about it. The government knew and China knew and, and we're finding out that some knew longer and some knew shorter. But, you know, I'm telling you, I just tell you tonight, we're going to have to get our faith in God that God cannot fail. I believe he is what others just think he was. I believe what they think he did, I think he still does today. Amen. That's right. And I think he touches their heart. And I say good night to you tonight. I want to tell you that, that where we are tonight, we're in that space between, I believe with all my heart, where he said, but the end is not yet. All these are the beginning of the sorrow. Three or four verses later, the uh, Bible scholars say that's the second half of Daniel's 70th week. Uh, I'm not into all that. I'm not smart enough to get all that. But I can tell you, I can take this scripture at face value. You say, well, it's not to be taken literally. Yes, it is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the bottom yes. except by me. Uh, so when you get into prophecy, I'm telling you, you've got to realize that, that they knew something about the day we was living in today. And I don't know, we might have, I don't think so. I really don't. I think it's at the door, and I don't mean to give any false hope, but but the disciples 2,000 years ago thought it was going to take place any moment. And I think we're so close it could. 
that I think all the things are getting in line. Amen. That's right. I think things are just lined up. And uh, by the way the land is led, I think I'd be safe and safe. But over the next hills home, no wonder people are crying out that my home is just around the bend. Yeah. Think about living out again. Amen. 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 No wonder the songwriter said, ask the old man what he's thinking about. He's I'm just thinking about home. I'm just thinking about home. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Thank you for joining us. If you don't know the Lord, why don't you pray right now? If you haven't, if you backslid on God, you know where you why don't you pray right now? I'll just I'll just close it together and when I start to pray, Brother Donnie can turn it off. We'll just do it a little different tonight. We got several here tonight. We appreciate you coming. We're setting apart from each other. We wipe the pews down. We're not daring God. You know, I just believe that that we ought to be careful about that. Amen. The Bible said he the thing that he's standing better take him lest he fall. I know what is your life is but a vapor, of course, for a little pierce for a little time. And it's gone. And I'm telling you, you better realize that tonight. And uh, a little a little special grace. God's given to us tonight. I think it could be down to weeks and months, weeks and days. I definitely think it's down to years. You know? Amen. And I believe the coming of the Lord is so close. And I'm telling you, when I was a little boy that preached like I'm preaching now. And I'm telling you, I, I remember eight, nine years old, I go to the altar, and maybe I didn't learn a lot of it, but I thought I could, every time they'd preach, I'd go to one Sunday morning and get saved. And on Sunday night, I'd come back, and they'd always make me think I didn't get done. I wanted to pray one more time, you know? One more time. One more time. And I'm like it right now. Are you, are you saying that? Absolutely. Amen. By the grace of God. Not a word of faith in a man's boat. I didn't do nothing just as I am without one plea, but thy blood was shed for me. But he didn't save me to sit down. He saved me to keep working. He didn't save me to look around, see what else I could get into. I preached the other night about, you know, that, that nobody's watching the windows. Chad Keefer preached that the first time I ever heard it. But I preached a like message the other day, tied a little different, but it's the same thing. We gotta watch the windows. We gotta watch those that are dangling, those that could go either go either way. And pull them on in. Amen. Pull them on. We like to pull you in tonight. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We can help. You can go to Facebook. You can leave us a message. You, we got a website. I think all of it's on there, and uh, it's on the TV screen, and it's it's on the, the, the Facebook page. So just stay in touch with us. All the name. If you're out there, you sick. I'm praying for you. I promise you. They, I don't think anybody in this church or their family has been sick that I haven't prayed for in the last day or so. Call them by name. Call by name. Not to put any halos on me, but tell you we're living in a serious day. You just here standing your feet. Good night to you that are watching. We're going to close in prayer. Father, right now in the name.